All right. Hey, YouTube, what's going on? A little bit of reorganization going on around here. So <laughs> got a lot going on. I can't find my mic either. <laughs> I got to get my mic back. But i uh, been moving some stuff around, getting reorganized. And we might have a new look to uh, everything, videos and whatnot. But uh, in particular, um, might, might possibly uh, be doing morning morning briefs, morning chats, morning news, whatever you want to call it, uh, bringing that back. So stay tuned. Uh, we might be doing some early morning stuff again, uh, pick back up where we left off and everything old is new again uh, with the uh, Brexit, the French protest. Where did we leave off last time when uh, we were still doing those? <clears throat> but uh, today I want to talk about uh, more so the pandemic preparedness not just focusing on this this new virus which is uh still an unknown and still uh, something to be watchful of uh and aware of but also in the that frame while you're thinking about it and in that frame while we're uh trying to figure out what we need to have when we're ready i uh was reevaluating and looking at some different things and thinking through um issues and thinking through the process of what as the stages went, what were some things that we needed to look at to be ready for? What did we be prepared for? And in particular, not so much the early phases and uh, the early stages of uh, an outbreak, which I think uh, we're pretty good at and we're, we're set for. And you hear a lot about and there's a lot of information on there about uh, different ways to protect yourself and uh, your family and different ways to uh, be all around uh, prepared, right? Um, but later on... And that would be um, thinking about as you move through a pandemic and things get so bad that pretty much the healthcare system is overwhelmed. Uh, a lot of us, a lot of you, a lot of people on here are in such a position that you're a long way from healthcare to begin with. Um, what happens when it's so overwhelmed, it's not even worth uh, going into town, going into the city, wherever that may be, the hospital, whatever may be located. And uh, either you got somebody that's sick or potentially could be sick and you have to quarantine and, and shelter in place an individual, if not, if not the whole family, focusing really on here, an individual, uh, say one person uh, had to go out and go to the bank. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully not the bank. Uh, but if you have to go to town for whatever reason and you want to isolate yourself when you come back, for, as an example, um, or if somebody is showing signs and symptoms and you know that the hospital is so overwhelmed that going to an ER or somewhere, somewhere like that is uh, probably 10 times more dangerous than just uh, holding what you got and using what you have available to uh, help them, uh, at, at least initially, until you're for sure that they are uh uh, sick and have whatever the case may be. Um, so sheltering in place and providing your own quarantine location, isolation room, if you will. Um, several years ago, a lot of people did a lot of good stuff on this and come to mind. Uh, Iridium 242 did a good uh, isolation room video. Uh, Full Spectrum Survival did a really good isolation uh, video years ago, and they redid a, did one recently uh, talking about a stuff to get for decon. And stuff recently he did a video on that and thinking through that process and thinking about it if you had to make a run and you had to uh, get what you needed and looking at things to think about that you may are you've already got a lot of things on hand to help you through these things a lot of improvised uh, things you can use obviously uh, if you don't have the the primaries like you know trash bags and and things like that are a vapor barrier Anything that blocks droplets of uh, a disease that is transmitted that way, even the ones that are drop are airborne, anything that can provide a barrier. Uh, the rain suits is a good one that Full Spectrum Survival brought up. Uh, just the cheap, inexpensive rain ponchos, rain suits, anything like that. Garbage bags, leaf, the big leaf type garbage bags that you can improvise to put on. And it's a it's a one-time use type thing, but it's better than uh, going it with nothing. But on top of that, if you had to isolate, what would I need 
to uh, isolate somebody in a designated location or make a make a location. Some things to think about and going through the. I did a quick run through the Walmart, the Wally World to uh, get my brain working and just seeing, and also getting a stock. I don't really go out that much to places like that to uh, um, shop or do anything else. So really getting an eyeball on, hey, what's going on? It, are things sold out? Um, was one thing I was looking at. And uh, doesn't seem to be anything unusual in our area, which is good because really it shouldn't be because threats in our the threat to our area is relatively low, uh, very low, as I've covered in previous videos. The thing to think about, not only the care of the patient, but setting up in cleanliness and just providing bulk um, bulk resources, right? You're going to want to be able to have a standalone room or standalone location on the on your property in your house ideally it's in a like an out outbuilding right like a shed and out a garage that is separate from the house would be ideal right and that would be uh, the perfect situation where it's completely isolated cordoned off and there's not a lot of shared space if you had to isolate to one section of the house that maybe access to the bathroom is probably the primary and you provide food in another manner that's something to think about but uh, if you had somebody that's isolated, you know, but maybe they're quarantined because they are sick. They're actually sick. Uh, a lot of things you think about, you know, bulk fluids, bulk um, water, you know, p people focus on Pedialyte a lot. And I've noticed, uh, you know, that's been longstanding. And I think we might have flipped things over, but I, as I think uh, Gatorade and things like that are actually cheaper now. When people first started talking about Pedialyte, I think it was more affordable than Gatorade. And now it's kind of flipped. Uh, that Gatorade and things like that that provide uh, the electrolytes and stuff are uh, more more affordable. From what I was looking at when I looked at Pedialyte, even you know if you cut it, you, know, you want to cut that with water probably. Uh, it's still, I think, in the long run, it's going to be a cheaper option to get just Gatorade, and you're getting a lot of fluid with that. But either way, whatever you go with. Um, having a lot of fluid purchased, like if you knew this was coming up, going out and stocking up on those items would be one of the like last minute buys potentially. You can make your own, you know, iodine solute, you know, or salted solution with sugar, sugar water to generate some uh, electrolyte solution for somebody. But uh, those things are off the shelf and they're easy and in particular they're disposable and, um, you can stage them in a location if you've already got it figured out. Say you're making, a, you know you have to make a weekly trip or something and you want to isolate after you get back for whatever the incubation period time is for that disease. Um, you know, you forcefully isolate yourself or somebody else. Um, having them pre those things pre-staged in there that you'll need like food. Uh, and water and, and things that you might need if you should you get sick while you're in there. Um, cell phones have been real handy uh, the, for the longest time. We always make talk about having a handheld radio so you can communicate. But with Wi-Fi and cell phones being so prevalent, um, just about everybody has extra extra devices where you can that person can be engaged from an isolated room uh, via the via Wi-Fi, getting on the internet and doing. You know, just being entertained or just being connected to everybody else and talking, being able to talk over the phone, uh, not just a radio, handheld radio, which uses batteries, which is not necessarily um, going to be needed in the situation. But maybe if you needed an unwired solution uh, because everything else is out, then, you know, radios are handy. But uh, it's what, what you got in the, just the current situation. Having that means of communication via cell phone and whatnot is going to be very uh critical and it's easy to set aside you know i think most of us have a cell phone we've discarded from years ago you can set it aside and have it so it connects to the wi-fi easily or a, some other device or just a computer or whatnot right um so something to think about there and in, in that isolation quarantine room location uh, having extra sanitization products extra cleaning products in bulk uh, staged your bleach your soaps uh, something you could easily stock up on and it's not going to go bad 
um, it's not um, going to be a hindrance to what you do anyway. So, but you're going to need more of it, especially if somebody becomes sick with like a flu type thing. You're definitely going to be a little, probably doing a lot more cleaning, and you're going to need that. And uh, just getting more of it uh, ahead of the game, or when you identify that you're going to be doing isolation, is going to be critical. But uh, even now, a soap, your soaps, your dish dish soaps, dish dish type soaps. Uh, and other types of cleaning, bleach, and things are going to last and continue on. You're going to continue to use them anyway, so why not? Um, some other things I looked at, um, large trash bags, the leaf, large garden bag, garden leaf bags, uh, not only to dispose of whatever's in that isolation room, uh, well, mostly, primarily that, but you can also use them uh, for suits and whatnot to help uh, as a barrier if you have to, if you don't have any other means. But uh, primarily you want those large leaf bags because you're going to be dumping and rotating through so much trash. Another thing I thought about, and this is something we prepped in our um, series last year, we're talking about just getting a basic preparedness, paper plates, paper products, disposable plates, because that's one less um, item that's getting shared between the isolation room and the rest of the household right you want to if they're needing to eat off anything if you're fixing meals give use those paper plates use those disposable plates because you're not bringing contaminated items back in the house to try to clean them you're just putting them in a large trash bag inside the isolation room to be disposed of um, and uh, that would be a, a definitely a good thing to think about is using all disposable products whatever goes into that room make it disposable so it can go in the trash bag and go out um, Especially if it's a much serious, more serious disease. I mean, your, your flu-like stuff is one thing. This coronavirus is one thing, which, you know, has could potentially have a higher fatality rate than, than the normal flu to be determined as the numbers come out. But it's looking pretty grim right now. But um, your other diseases, smallpox, uh, things that we haven't seen in a long time that are much more deadly, uh, could be in play, and those are things that you don't want to mess with uh, if they're uh, in the air, or in the, they're in the, they're in, they're in the, in the situation you're in. So you definitely want to de, de, uh, not decompose. <laughs> you want to get rid of that. That's going to be trash, and that's going to be uh, stuff like that. You're just going to want to burn and get rid of that way, and not even bring. Uh, try to no, not trying to wash dishes. You're not trying to wash clothes, probably. Um, if you can get gowns and stuff, if this person, say you are uh, isolating because you went to what you know was a contaminated, very highly virulent area, right? And you go into town and you come back and you're just going to isolate yourself. Those, what you wore in is probably, think about what you wear in first so that it is something that is disposable, um, relatively cheap. I mean, that's it comes into play where you have cheap clothing set aside. You know, that's where your Salvation Army, your thrift store stuff can come into play. Uh, wearing that, so when you come back, you just simply toss that and it's disposable. And uh, you're getting rid of it as soon as you get back to your location. Or if you're able to hand wash. I mean, well, and I think about it. See, this is one thing I'm thinking about while I'm here is I could go ahead and have a, have a wash station set up and wash those clothes as I when I get back. Um, as well, and just hang dry them in, next to the location where we are doing the uh, decontamination or whatever, and that would be one thing. But so we wouldn't have to do that. But I uh, could have you know robes set aside or a, a gown type set up, like a medical gown, but something a little more uh, real cheap pair of um, like uh, night clothes or pajamas or whatever uh, set aside in that isolation room to put on, and that's what you wear when you're in there, so that they'll be disposed of potentially. If uh, there's any signs or symptoms or anything like that, just things like that to think about uh, how you're going to go about. Uh, and then ultimately, when you do leave that isolation room, you think you're you're pretty sure you're clear because you've went through what the understood uh, um, what's that called when the virus hibernates. <laughs> uh, but this time in between getting contacted and getting sick, once you've gotten through that time. Uh, you know, still decontaminate your room and everything, and that 
bringing in your soap and your cleaners and stuff. And one thing to think about in your the room you set up, have as many non-porous surfaces as possible. Make it completely washable. Um, everything, if everything's painted, you know it's all able to be hand washed and wash it down. You don't want a bunch of open pour wood or anything that can contain and harbor moisture or anything like that. Um, so any, everything needs to be able to be washed down and wiped down with uh, strong cleaners, disinfectants, if not just you know a mix of bleach and water. Um, so things to think about, uh, you can pre-stage some basic you know sickness type foods, uh, long-term shelf life. Uh, and think think in particular uh, saltines. You know, growing up, stage a six-pack of Sprite and saltines, right? <laughs> that cured what ailed you. We talk about fluids and stuff. You know. If, there, if it's a stomach upset issue or something like that, have that stuff pre-staged potentially um, or bought again at the last minute uh, knowing what you might need, uh, having some things. So, and pre-staging before things really break out because you don't want to be taking multiple trips and going, oh, I need this later on, right? You want to have it now before things get really bad and you're having to expose yourself to the disease or Multiple, more people have the disease then and you know it could be circulating in the community more uh, you want to limit that at that um, so thinking about these things now so that your store trips are minimized and your exposure is minimized is a kind of a key point to this as well and getting through this thought process of what all you might need and why uh, it's not just to prevent getting sick it's to uh, it primarily is but also to uh, ride you through the time if you are sick or if somebody in the household is sick without being able to go to healthcare because in the big pandemic in the bad ones the healthcare system is going to be so overwhelmed you might not be able to get in line <laughs> they they're not they can only so see so many people and if you're able to handle things you're being that much more better beneficial to your community i guess you'd say um obviously depending on how sick you get and what it is is a big determinant to that um, but uh, you know you can only do so much and if the system's overwhelmed and the care is not there anyway if they don't have the IV bags if they don't have ventilators if they don't have the things that are going to heal you anyway uh, is it going to be really worth it uh, to make that trip and it potentially expose a second person in your household uh, while you're trying to go in and get care uh, to the healthcare facility, which is going to be overwhelmed with the disease and the virus is going to be everywhere. So some more thoughts on that, folks, and some things I thought about today and making the run around Wally World. Um, just thinking about uh, what some things would need if it gets to the next level. Not not necessarily now, but looking at it as a phase thing goes in. You know, I've got the things now in this phase. I think we're good. Continue to gather information. If it goes to a next level or if some of the disease comes down the stretch, years from now how could that play out so just some thoughts there youtube y'all have a good day stay tuned for morning morning fun we'll see if we get this started live free